This is a table I got a long time ago. My daughter and son-in-law have moved into a brand new house and I'm giving them this table and I'll fix it up for you. Hi everyone, I'm Connie from The Paint Photographer. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made over a table that I've had in my garage for a long time. I bought it so many years ago well, I went to my son-in-law. It was just, I believe, my daughter's boyfriend at the time. Um, I went to his grandparents' house. And they, for some reason, had a table. And it had four chairs. And there were no leaves anymore. But there were two sides that flipped up. They asked me if I wanted that table. Sure, I'll take that table. They have a new home and it's farmhouse modern. So this is aviary. I'm going to paint the table in a solid color of aviary. So I went on with a paint pixie brush and added one layer of aviary to the entire bottom half of the table. There are four grandchildren that live in the house that this is going into and they all take piano lessons. So I'm gonna share with you some of their practicing that they did while grandma visited. That was Melanie. She's seven, just about to turn eight. She is in her second year of piano lessons. I think she's doing pretty darn good. All right, so we started painting this table and I can see I have bleed through right here. And it's only on all of the legs about this far up. So I'm not sure if it's this metal foot or this table at one time had gotten wet and sat in water. So what I need to do is seal it so the bleed through stops. So this is the DIY Salvation Solution in clear. I like to use clear because you can get right down to the wood grain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to distress this paint off of these areas that I want that wood grain to come through. But first, I am going to open this can and sometimes if you have this product and you seal it back up again, you're going to have an issue opening your can, you're going to have some rust, you're going to have all kinds of problems. So what I like to do is take a two times bottle and pour it in to the bottle. And then I work with it out of here. No rust, no anything. So this is my solution for salvation solution, rust issues. So now I'm gonna distress this and then we'll put the salvation solution on to stop the bleed through. You can distress as much off as you want. All you wanna do is get down to that wood layer so that when you do distress it, the salvation solution is laying right on top of that. If I would have known before that it was going to have some bleed through, I would have put the salvation solution on first and then a coat of paint. All right, we're gonna put this salvation solution whoop, onto a plate. With a smaller brush, I'm going to apply it just to this leg. It's the only place that it's bleeding, so I don't have to apply it to the whole table. This is going to stop the bleed through. This 
this product, I don't know. I just, it works fantastic. You don't have to worry about bleed through as soon as you put this on. The directions say to wait your 12 hours in between and put another coat on. That was Mallory. She's 12, going on 13. She's doing a really good job. She's been in piano lessons for a long time. I remember playing that song when I was a little girl. So I'm going on with the second coat of the aviary right over top of the Salvation Solution. I will no longer have bleed through with putting that product on. So you're just going to give your piece of furniture a second coat right over top of it. And you will have no issues, I promise. We have the rose chintz um, paint inlay, which is what the kids wanted me to put on the entire face of the table. I thought that would be a little much, so I talked them into just putting it on the back and the front of the chairs that are going to go up against the table. I only painted two chairs because they have farmhouse benches that will go on the other two sides of the table. So. I'm cutting out this paint inlay. It has grid marks on it so that you can follow the grid marks. I'm cutting it out wide enough and long enough to go over the face of the chair back and the back side of the chair back in one solid piece. I just used my fingers to make a crease mark and then I cut on that line. To put the paint inlay on, you need wet paint. So I'm going over with the second coat on these chairs with the DIY aviary, and I'm making a wet coat of paint. And then I take the paint inlay, and uh, making sure I have the right side, I adhere it to the front of that chair back, and I push it in place. Then I go ahead and I add paint to the back side of the chair so that it's nice and wet. And I'm going to push that paint inlay into that paint as well. Adding it into the wet paint is what adheres that paint inlay to the paint. It is like paint itself, so it's just, it needs to get a good adhesion. I use water and the IOD brayer to make sure that it's all flat and really making a good connection on the front and the back side of the chair. After the chair has dried, and I'm going to wet it again. Yep, I'm gonna get it wet. Take a piece of paper toweling, just, um, wipe up all the drips. Like you don't want it sopping wet, you just want it wet. Well, making it wet is going to like let that backing release from the paint. Those roses are actual paint and you wanna make sure that they will stay into the painted surface and just the backing comes off. So you can spray it and uh, dampen it off and give it about 30 seconds or so before you start pulling on that backing. And uh, once you start pulling on that backing, it'll come right off. This is where the magic is, so I'll get you up close. And if you would like to try one of these paint inlays, visit my website at thepaintedphotographer.com and search for paint inlay.
That's such a fun process. I'm going to let you watch the second chair because you can't help but just watch this paint inlay come right off. I love watching it. The great thing about these paint inlays is you can use them a second, third, or fourth time. So make sure when you pull it off that you lay it flat to dry and you can use it a second time and a third time. The image gets more vintagey every time you use it. I gave the table a good sanding with my electric sander. I was outside, made sure I had some ventilation because you will provide dust when you do that. And then I also went in on the legs with a baby wipe because I wanted that dark stain look. I also did the chairs with the electric sander and got them all distressed. That was Maxwell. He's 11. I think he's the one who has the most passion for it. He doesn't use any music. This is Big Top that I'm using. I am going to put a layer of Big Top over top of everything. I put it into a separate container so that I don't contaminate my big container. I call it Dirty Big Top. So I pour it in and I use out of this smaller container. So if I do get stinky Big Top, it doesn't contaminate the entire tub. So on the paint inlays, you have to be extremely careful not to blend that rose into anything. This is actual paint. That rose is paint and those leaves are paint. So if you brush over it real, like go over it multiple times, you will smear that paint. So I try to just go over it one time very lightly. My brush is barely touching the surface. Now a layer of big top over the entire chair. And after that big top gets over top of that paint inlay, you can go over it multiple times and not have to worry about it. It just needs to be sealed the first time. I wipe off all the dry dust from the sanding that we did so that I don't have any of that mix into my big top. I'm doing some additional distressing with a baby wipe and trying to get some of those raised areas to show that wood grain just a little bit more. The bottom of the table you won't see very well, so a little bit heavier distress on them is going to be just fine. We'll put a coat of big top on the bottom side of the legs as well. When I'm using Big Top and I have to do a second coat, I take a baby wipe and I wrap my brush into the baby wipe just to keep that brush moist so that I can use it a second time without it drying out. 
My daughter wanted copper on those feet, so I want some of the green to still show through. I'm using the DIY Pennies from Heaven, which is a really pretty copper if you like copper. And I just went ahead and I put a solid coat onto the foot. It doesn't, it's pretty opaque, so it will have some of that shining through. And then I just took my finger and brushed some of it off on the high areas to get that distressed kind of look that it was painted before and it was a copper foot to begin with and uh, this pennies from heaven is a one-step paint no top coat is needed on this as well the top of the table is going to get a lot of wear so big top is very very durable and i usually put three coats of big top on the tops of tables when i'm doing them i go ahead and i go every which way with my brush as i'm putting it on while the big top is still wet i'll take my brush and i'll go one solid stroke all the way across and i continue to do that until the entire top surface is completely coated and then i just go back through while it's still wet you can't do this when it starts to dry so you have to work very quickly and i just do one solid stroke making sure that i'm always going the same way Our daughter and son-in-law and their family live about 45 minutes away from us. So the countryside to go there is beautiful. I thought I would give you a little snippet of how it looks. They used to live in Oregon, which is three days away. So I'll take one hour any day. Enjoy. Here we are pulling into their driveway. They've worked so hard to have this home that they've dreamed of their entire married lives. Here it is in its all white glory. They've lived in that garage for one year. They have a farm. You can see the greenhouse in the back. We're very proud of them and they're making this house a home for their family of six. Here we are at the house where we're gonna deliver the table. This is their brand new house. There's the cat sitting by the door, can't go in. And we are gonna deliver this table to this home. This is what she calls the breakfast nook. She does have a huge island and also a formal dining room. So this is just an area where the kids are gonna eat their breakfast and their snack and whatever else to entertain maybe. So it's a cute little area and it's just right off the deck. They can see their greenhouse from here. The kids are going to enjoy having this space to do whatever they want. That wall behind it is white shiplap and we're trying to figure out what we should put on that wall. I did think an old garden sign would be the best thing to do. And then once we got going and held up a few pictures, here is the IOD paint inlay Gregory's and it would look nice, but here's their family portrait that I took last year. I think in a huge canvas, it would be perfect. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, we'll watch out for worms. How many worms are on your driveway? Don't forget them. Like 10. Okay. Bye. Bye.